Hi everyone, I'm Chris Walker, and I have the privilege of being Corporate Vice President and General Manager of Mobile Computing Group at Intel. We have an action-filled agenda lined up for you today. First, we will unpack the 11th Gen Intel Core processors, and later this afternoon, Project Athena and our new Evo platform. So stay tuned for both those sessions. We have a lot to show you. Now with that, let's dive right in. We announced our 11th Gen Intel Core processor with Intel Iris Xe graphics, previously codenamed Tiger Lake earlier today. This is Tiger Lake, introducing many firsts and innovations, and it is truly an exciting product. It has a new CPU architecture, new Intel Iris Xe graphics, new AI capabilities, a new media and display engine, new hardware hardened security. We've integrated Thunderbolt 4, also new on the platform, new PCIe Gen 4 interface. We've continued our industry-leading Wi-Fi 6 with Intel Wi-Fi 6 at gig plus speeds, and it's one of our most scalable mobile processors ever, 7 to 28 watt operating range in all. At Intel, we are very proud of our heritage, and beyond our decade of compute leadership, our purpose is to create world-changing technologies that enriches the lives of every person on Earth. And with the 11th generation of our core processors, we are extending our leadership in CPU compute and beyond. In just a year, we were able to deliver over 20% performance improvements on CPU, and even better than that versus our competition. We've added a new XE graphics engine to deliver large improvements in performance and more than 60% performance gains versus competition. We've enhanced the AI capabilities to deliver massive leaps in AI compute improvement and it's 4x that of our nearest competitor. Benchmark numbers, though, are not sufficient. A great PC platform is defined by the real-world performance it delivers. 11th Gen Core is truly the best for end users across a broad spectrum of real-world applications like Office 365, Adobe, and popular games like Gears Tactics and CSGO. And we know people don't just do one thing or use one app to get things done. They use multiple apps. With 11th Gen Core, we combine several critical engines in a single processor package. This multi-engine approach enables us to deliver the performance people need to get in the flow, get things done faster, and achieve their most meaningful contributions. To better explain how all this works, let's walk through a real-world workflow. This example uses two different Adobe applications, Adobe Premiere Pro and Adobe Photoshop. These applications have been optimized to take full advantage of our multi-engine matching the right workloads to the right engine to deliver the best in real-world performance. Now let's see how it works. A typical video workflow would start with playing back your imported video, editing the video, exporting it, and then creating a thumbnail. Let's explore each of these steps and how Intel's new 11th Gen Core processors and platform compares against the competition. And playback you will see smooth playback of 4K 10-bit video on Intel while the competition struggles. The AMD 4800U is on the left, and the Intel 11th Gen platform is on the right. You can see that the video on the left is stalling. Now, cropping your video using auto reframe allows you to intelligently crop the image for social media and phone screens while maintaining the subject in the center. Auto reframe is an AI-based feature in Adobe Premiere that completes this step twice as fast on Intel. After editing, you want to export the video to post on social media. This step takes advantage of the hardware acceleration of QuickSync video to complete this step greater than twice as fast in the competition. The exported video is also much cleaner. When you post to social media or YouTube, you want to add a thumbnail image of your video to the post. Now Photoshop has an AI feature that speeds up selecting your subject, greatly improving the speed and creating an exciting thumbnail to maximize your clicks. With better performance in each of these steps, the overall experience on Intel's 11th Gen Core platform is much more responsive with twice the performance. As you can see in the demo, the multi-engines in the 11th Gen Core, along with Iris Xe graphics, working in harmony to deliver twice as fast in the full video editing workflow. And when we think about what it means to be the best, we really challenge ourselves to be the best across the widest scenarios. Unlike our imitators using benchmarks like Cinebench, which has a really niche usefulness in real life, 
we set for ourselves a higher bar to ensure we are really the best across industry benchmarks, leading apps, and compelling user workflows. And we work closely with software partners to optimize their applications to bring truly unique features to life. Creation is just one of the many things people do throughout their day. They may start their day conferencing or connecting with others, do their work, create, collaborate in the middle and end of the day. And when you're done, you wanna kick back and watch your favorite shows in the highest quality or play your favorite games all on the same system. The 11th gen Intel Core processors adapts to deliver the best performance, no matter what you're doing. No compromises on Windows and on Chrome. It's also why we're proud to say 11th gen Core is the world's best CPU. You'll hear more on each of these pillars as we go through the rest of the day. Building on a great CPU, our ambition is to deliver the world's most advanced laptops. Last year, we introduced Project Athena, our innovation program like no other. We're excited with the progress to date. With 50 verified designs in market, 150 partners delivering breakthrough innovations based on thousands of hours of user insights. In form factor, battery life, connectivity, and intelligent performance harnessing the power of AI. As we enter our second year of the program, we raise the experience requirements based on what we learned and in the new needs of remote work and learning. We announced Intel Evo platforms today. With the Intel Evo, we represent the best of our laptops for getting things done. Each of these laptops will be more responsive, plugged in or on battery, with longer battery life and fast charging capability. Instant wake to quickly get you in the flow and with the best connectivity with Intel Wi-Fi 6 at gig plus speeds and wire connectivity with a single plug Thunderbolt 4. Now the Intel Evo brand will only be featured on laptops built on the world's best CPU, the 11th gen Intel Core processor and verified to meet the stringent Project Athena second edition requirements. We can't wait to tell you more about that this afternoon. Now on that note, I'd like to introduce you to the rest of our speakers for this Blueprint series. We will further unpack the 11th gen core CPU, the graphics architecture, and show you how and why we've created the world's best processors and with Evo, the best laptop platforms. We're excited. These platforms are coming to market this holiday. Now here to share how real life applications run best on Intel, please welcome Roger Chandler. Roger? Thanks, Chris. Hi, everyone. I'm Roger Chandler. I work in Intel's architecture, graphics, and software group. I'm excited to be here today to share with you some of the great experiences Intel's 11th gen core processor will unleash for users around the world. So earlier, Chris Walker explained how Intel's 11th gen core processor is going to deliver a wide range of usages for PC platforms, from productivity and creation to gaming, entertainment, and collaboration. These usages and experiences are delivered by our amazing software partners who harness the capabilities of our products to deliver applications their customers love. Each year, more than 12 million developers engage with Intel through our programs, and we partner with thousands of ISVs to help them unleash more performance and new experiences on Intel products. Now, you will hear from many of them during this launch event as they share their excitement about the performance capabilities of Tiger Lake. The software is critical to the success of a platform and partnering with the ecosystem is essential, which is why we apply a global software enabling engine to every product that we launch. Now, until now, our software enabling program was possibly one of our best kept secrets. I see it as an engine that continuously magnifies the benefits of our products with our partners. And there are multiple components to our program. First, we provide world-class platforms as well as tools and SDKs, like our One API resources, the Intel Graphics Performance Analyzers, and the OpenVINO Toolkit to help accelerate their development. Also, Intel application engineers and design experts collaborate with software partners to deliver great performance and define new platform usages that we can promote to users worldwide. And we use this collaboration with our software partners to define hardware and software architectural innovations based on their users' needs to help us define our next generation of products. And this cycle moves forward. For the past 18 months, we have focused this software enabling engine on the 11th gen 
core processor, and our partners will deliver a wide range of innovative PC experiences. But one area of innovation we are particularly excited about is AI on PCs. Now, AI on client PCs is transforming how users experience and interact with their PC platforms by increasing performance and quality and simplifying historically complex tasks. Let me give you an example. Hundreds of millions of people create and edit digital content on PCs. One of the most basic tasks in a visual creative workflow is the process of cleanly selecting a subject from a photo and moving it to another image to create a composite. With Adobe's Photoshop 7, released almost 15 years ago, there were basic tools to do this. To select, you use the lasso tool that you moved around the subject. It was time consuming, prone to causing selection issues, and took hours for multiple complex images. Fast forward to about five years ago with the Adobe Creative Suite version of Photoshop. They introduced the Quick Selection tool, which automatically detected the edges of the selected object. It cleaned things up, but still took a time. With the latest release of Photoshop, Adobe has applied their Sensei AI, which has been optimized with OpenVINO to make this much easier. With the AI-powered Select Subject feature, you simply click a button and it instantly does what used to take hours. This is just one example of how AI is accelerating creative use cases, but there are many, many more. AI is increasingly used in client applications to accelerate complicated workflows, take care of the tedious, and basically take the edge off of technology to allow users to focus their time on creating, producing, or having fun. The applications are limitless, from enhancing the detail of blurry photos to removing your visual background or suppressing background noise on video calls, which is very important today, from tagging and tracking photos to infusing PC games with more realistic physics or more lifelike intelligence. It's becoming ubiquitous. And most developers are learning to integrate it in some form into their applications. And it's becoming a foundational technology in which we expect to see exponential growth. But what's unique about the use of AI on a client system? Well, there's a lot of talk about AI in the cloud, where much of the training of models is best done on the server, but on the client, we primarily see AI inferencing from the models created. And there are a number of reasons why that workload is best on a client platform. Many client usages require very low latency. With photo editing to grammar detection, any type of network lag impacts the experience when users require an instant response. Client-based inferencing can always be available as well, regardless of whether or not you're connected to a network. AI applications process a lot of data, and often that can be private data. Keeping personal and business data private and within one's control is a major priority for a lot of the customers we speak with. And also, AI inferencing in the cloud consumes cycles, which can increase costs. Many of the developers we work with who have client usages that are connected to the cloud look for opportunities to offload some of the back-end compute to the client, which often has cycles to spare, and it can lower their costs. But also on the client, artificial neural networks can be very compute intensive. Some neural networks require millions, if not billions, of operations at a time, often in the form of highly parallel operations that cascade data through the neural network. This increases the need for a greater level of compute on modern PCs. Otherwise, it impacts overall performance, battery life, or system responsiveness. While generalized compute performance can help, Combining it with AI-specific compute capabilities on the processor is the ideal solution, which is what we are delivering with our 11th gen core processor. To ensure that AI workloads run best on Intel, we have worked with Microsoft and Google to support their industry-leading AI software frameworks on our CPUs and GPUs. Complementing this, Intel's OpenVINO toolkit allows software developers to access additional features and optimizations ahead of other frameworks, deploying pre-trained, Intel-optimized AI workloads across multiple platforms with a common inferencing engine. And using OpenVINO and other solutions, developers can quickly take advantage of our DL Boost acceleration in Intel CPUs and GPUs, as well as low-power AI acceleration provided by our integrated Intel Gaussian Neural Accelerator. To better explain how all of this works, let's walk through a real-world workflow. This example uses three different software applications, Adobe's Photoshop Elements, Topaz Labs Gigapixel application, and Nero's photo tagging software. These applications are familiar to most creators and are used by millions of users worldwide. And each have been optimized to take full advantage of Intel's 
built-in AI acceleration, matching the right workload to the right compute to deliver a seamless user experience. Let's see how it works. This workflow takes a set of images from the 19th century up to quality that fits in with a modern catalog with a few easy clicks and three AI-enabled applications. The first application we will look at is Photoshop Elements Colorize, which takes a very labor-intensive manual process and automates it. In about 16 seconds, we colorize seven photos. Next, we'll upscale these photos from 0.3 megapixel all the way up to five megapixels using Topaz Gigapixel AI. The AMD 4800U is on the left and the Intel 11th gen core system is on the right. You can see that on the right, the Intel 11th gen is processing images faster because of OpenVINO optimizations for Intel GPU DP4A instructions. We are able to upscale all seven pictures in about 19 seconds on the 11th gen system. That gives us about a 5x improvement over the AMD 4800U system. Next, we will take these pictures and apply them to our modern catalog, which we'll do with Nero AI Photo Tagger. We are able to scan through 1,000 images looking for features to tag within each picture in just a few seconds. We are able to tag all 1,000 pictures faster on Tiger Lake. And now we can pop open our new catalog and search for the pictures that show mountains. And our new pictures just show up. When we look at our original pictures side by side, there is not only color applied to the photo, but also greatly enhanced detail and texture that brings the photos to life. In this example, you can see how AI is used to help the creator focus more on what they want to do, creating. What's really impressive though, is when you see how much better this experience is when delivered on Intel's 11th gen processor. When increasing the resolution of a batch of photos, it's up to five times faster than the latest gen competitive products. And the overall workflow is greater than two times faster. So to summarize, we're seeing AI transform how users interact with their computing platforms, simplifying the complex and dramatically speeding up the experience. And Intel's 11th gen delivers two to five times more performance than competitive products in these AI workloads. So with that, let me pass it over to Nathan Smith, a senior director at Intel, who will share more details about how our processor delivers this stellar AI performance. Nathan, over to you. Thanks, Roger. Hi, everyone. I'm Nathan Smith, senior director of Client AI, and I'm excited to be here. It's amazing to see these transformational new AI capabilities come into the PC and optimized on Intel architecture. AI-enhanced workloads are emerging across the industry in many different applications and usages. While we broadly describe them all as artificial intelligence, the actual workloads and compute needs can vary significantly. From small models that run continually in the background and need to carefully sip power to very large models that will take every ounce of compute they can get and still want more, to bursty workloads where the first response is really what matters most. We assessed a wide variety of workloads to determine the right capabilities needed in our platform and identified the common trends that helped us shape the AI engines. We found that a one-size-fits-all approach didn't match the wide range of market needs we were seeing. We designed the 11th gen Intel Core processor with the right engines to tackle the full breadth of these workloads. Bringing together the power of the CPU and the power of graphics, both with Intel's Deep Learning Boost enhancements and a unique low-power AI accelerator, the 11th gen delivers exceptional AI performance. It's delivering up to 4x advantage in AI acceleration on the Intel Iris Xe graphics compared to competition, and provides up to 1.7 times the performance over competition on AI workloads running in the CPU. Our next generation Intel Gaussian and Neural Accelerator, or GNA, improves both its power efficiency and performance to deliver exciting new usages like low power dynamic noise suppression. Let's take a closer look at these three AI engines and what they bring to our 11th gen Intel Core processor. Intel's Iris Xe graphics in the 11th gen core processor has been redesigned and enhanced. 
One of the powerful new technologies it delivers is Intel's DL Boost DP4A. DL Boost DP4A computes a four-wide dot product with a 32-bit accumulate, which accelerates 8-bit integer math. This powerful vector dot product extension is optimized to accelerate 8-bit convolutional neural networks, which are commonly used for AI inference and in deep learning applications. Optimized with Intel's OpenVINO Toolkit, Intel's DL Boost DP4A technology with native support for 8-bit integer data types allows our 11th Gen Core processor to deliver up to a 4x performance advantage versus competition. What does that mean for you? It means you can get your work done faster, it helps keep you in the creative flow, and as Roger shared earlier, it enables stunning new AI usages like photo upscaling. Intel's Deep Learning Boost VNNI continues to deliver AI leadership performance on our 11th gen core CPU architecture. The VNNI, or Vector Neural Network Instruction, is part of the AVX instruction extensions of our x86 architecture. It is designed to accelerate convolutional neural network-based algorithms. It combines what previously took three separate instructions, a vector multiply and two vector adds, into a single mixed precision vector dot product instruction. DL Boost VNNI technology provides a 1.7x performance advantage over competition. And as part of the CPU instruction set, it is simple to use, being enabled through industry standard frameworks and libraries. What does that mean for you? More AI performance, faster results, and ubiquitous support all helping drive new experiences. The 11th Gen will also include our next generation of the Gaussian and Neural Accelerator, or GNA 2.0. This is our low-power AI accelerator, optimized for streaming workloads, such as transcription or translation, or my personal favorite, dynamic noise cancellation, which can remove distracting background noises, such as a dog barking. It runs at the low power of 1 giga ops per milliwatt and delivers up to 38 giga ops per second peak throughput. Because it is a separate IP block, it can execute while the CPU or graphics are busy executing on other workloads or idling in low power modes. It can save power versus running the equivalent workload on the CPU, providing longer battery life or freeing up additional compute for the CPU by offloading the right AI streaming workloads to Intel's GNA. While I enjoy geeking out a bit on technology, what I really love is how that technology can make life easier and experiences better. And that's where combining our AI engines on our 11th gen core processor can really shine and deliver. Let's take a look at another use case, one that I think has become near and dear to many more of us who are now working, schooling, or socializing remotely. Online collaboration is more important than ever, and Intel, coupled with Intel's AI engines, is there to help deliver a better experience. From background blur using DL Boost VNNI, to GNA removing distracting background noises, to DL Boost EP4A, helping upscale the resolution on the images you're seeing, AI is making collaboration better, and Intel is making AI better. Let's watch a short video highlighting some of the benefits AI is bringing to collaboration. It's important. I'm just saying, for some people. We just saw how our AI engines on the 11th gen core processor are coming together to provide the best collaborative experience. We found that collaboration and productivity are tightly interwoven.
You need to get things done fast on your own and then be able to share them quickly and clearly with others to get feedback and get the job done. AI is just one of the many new innovations and capabilities helping deliver collaboration and productivity. Intel provides the right combination of productivity, connectivity, and unique features to help people share their best selves, whether it's with family, classmates and teachers, or with coworkers. And we're enabling this on more PCs than ever before. Here to share more about the magic of the 11th gen core architecture is Boyd Phelps, Vice President in the Design Engineering Group. Over to you, Boyd. Thank you, Nathan. You heard Chris, you heard Roger talking about performance, and Tiger Lake certainly is that. But it is so much more. Our architectural innovation and pace is at its fastest ever. Not only does Tiger Lake deliver unprecedented leaps in performance, but it delivers many new and updated IPs throughout the SOC for a user experience that is perfect for our times. There is so much that is new. It is more than a generational improvement in IA and graphics. It is an architecture that is built upon a fabric that removes the bottlenecks of bandwidth and latency for not only IA and graphics performance, but it provides scalable, power-efficient AI from the low-power GNA 2.0 engine to VNNI on IA to DP4A with XE. Tiger Lake delivers rich visual capabilities with its new display and imaging engines to a wide palette of new I.O. offerings across Thunderbolt 4, Type-C, and PCIe Gen 4 for the platform all with a power efficiency that enables our OEMs and customers to build designs to collaborate, connect, and create in ways never before possible, whether plugged or unplugged with their laptops. Not only did we re-architect the CPU, but we continued to invest in the platform through our advancements and innovation in the PCH. We delivered our lowest modern connected standby and clients with increased integrated power delivery, Fiverr. We continued to evolve technology shaping the PC platform interaction and usage by integrating Wi-Fi 6, enabling higher peak data rates and 4x capacity improvement over the prior standard, driving I.O. innovation, extending past the traditional I.O. support for standards such as PCIe, SATA, and USB, and now for the first time, fully enabled SoundWire audio interface implemented for low power and more flexibility in audio platform design. We improved the PC touch host controller such that it's lower power, more responsive, and with higher precision. It supports simultaneous pen plus touch for Project Athena two-in-one designs. Now, Tiger Lake's audio voice and speech IP enables USB and Bluetooth audio offload, providing substantial savings and enhanced battery life when using multimedia applications. Oh, and we made everything more secure with our fourth generation converged security and manageability engine. Again, there is so much that is new and packed into Tiger Lake. Let's get started. Tiger Lake was a collaborative effort across all disciplines and a truly one Intel effort from our process technologists to our SOC and IP architects and designers to our platform teams. It was a noble task to architect Tiger Lake to harmonize everything for the user, to create an entirely new platform built for today's times and for the future of the world's most advanced laptops. The foundational element that unlocked our architects and designers to create the world's most advanced laptops was our Superfin technology. Together with our process engineers in technology development, we redesigned not only the transistor, but also the metal stack. Let me tell you first what we did, and then I'll tell you why this is so important. We added a new high-performance transistor that increases drive current with an improved gate process, enabling higher mobility while also lowering the source drain resistance, all at a lower capacitance. We use this transistor in all of our high frequency sensitive IPs, such as the IA core, high speed fabrics, and memory subsystem. Not only did we add a new device for high performance, but we also took our existing high VT devices used in our non frequency critical IPs, like Type C, PCIe, and Display, and made them more efficient. We were able to speed up those devices while lowering their leakage. And this gave us the ability to lower their operating voltage and return more power headroom to be available for our high performance IPs and enabled us to integrate additional IP. Now the transistor was step one. 
Step two was to improve the metal stack. As Moore's Law continues to shrink feature sizes, the metal stack's interconnect performance is as vital as the transistor itself. We invested significant engineering focus and resources to redesign the metal stack as well, so as to ensure the full potential of the transistor was unleashed. We greatly improved the resistance of the mid to lower layers and vias, which are heavily utilized. We also added two additional high performance layers at the top to ensure we could reach peak frequencies with little voltage roll off. We also dramatically enhanced the MEMCAP capabilities by greater than 4x to ensure a rapid and solid power delivery response for high CPU intensity workloads. Now the combination of the new transistor technologies as well as the improved metal stack and the MEMCAP capabilities is what we call SuperFin technology. Now I'd like to explain how we use it to deliver performance in Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake was built upon the foundation of SuperFin technology enabling us to deliver a dramatic leap forward in, in core and graphics performance. Willow Cove was designed to optimize the entire range of the voltage frequency domain to improve not only responsiveness, but also for sustained and peak performance. Let me illustrate what this dynamic range of performance looks like. At a given voltage, Willow Cove delivers a significant frequency increase. It can also operate at any fixed frequency with significantly lower voltage. It is performance across the full VF curve, a greater dynamic range from Vmin to Vmax. Tiger Lake today will launch with frequencies nearly a gigahertz more than our previous generation at 4.8 gigahertz versus 3.9. And we are not done yet. There will be more to come with future Tiger Lake launches. Willow Cove delivers not only greater improvements in single threaded and all core scenarios, but it also delivers much higher base frequencies for sustained performance. This is exactly what we wanted to achieve. In designing Willow Cove, we were driven by three main goals. Build upon the foundation of the Sunny Cove architecture with all of its deeper, wider, smarter, and VNNI hardware for AI, but make it significantly faster and do it at lower power. SuperFin technology enabled this. Two, redesign the caching architecture to be non-inclusive with a mid-level cache size increase from 512 kilobytes to 1.25 megabytes in order to handle the increased performance capabilities of Willow Cove and the emerging workloads of tomorrow. And three, make it more secure with features like Control Flow Enhancement Technology, CET, that helps protect against control flow oriented attacks. These three goals have come together to deliver our most significant improvement in IE performance in many a generation. Now Tiger Lake brings stunning improvements to graphics with the new XE engine. We were able to deliver an entry level discrete graphics performance into our integrated graphics engine enabling a thin and light gaming performance that is unrivaled in the 7 to 28 watt form factor space. Tiger Lake delivers up to a 2x improvement in 3D performance and even greater improvements, greater than 4x, in AI capabilities with the added DP4A instruction support. The SOC team's goal was to allocate more power for our graphics IP team to take advantage of, and they did. Together with the added power headroom, advantages of the SuperFin technology, and architectural improvements, they were able to increase the execution units from 64 to 96, drive them faster, increasing both the cache and overall bandwidth efficiency. With the massive increase in XE graphics came the demand for more bandwidth. To open up more bandwidth, we had to redesign Tiger Lake to feed the XE and IA engines. One of the most complex tasks in Tiger Lake was to architect and design the bandwidth such that it supported not only the dramatic gains in performance, but also to handle the myriad of concurrent use cases for which it was intended to support. There is a skill to creating a balanced machine in both bandwidth, capability, and efficiency. Tiger Lake achieved this beautifully. There are two ways to provide more bandwidth, simply increasing the available bandwidth or making it better or more efficient use of what is available. Tiger Lake did both by increasing not only the efficiency of our systems, but also by increasing the absolute max bandwidth. First, we added a dual ring architecture to our coherent fabric. This coupled with improved frequency enables us to deliver greater than a 2x improvement in coherent bandwidth of close to 300 gigabytes per second. The efficiency of the ring improved as we not only increased the last level cache size by 50% and made it non-inclusive to capture larger working sets, but we also reduced the voltage required to drive our ring frequencies. The four core version of Tiger Lake launching today has 12 megabytes of last level cache. 
We also added the possibility of I.O. traffic to cache directly to the LLC, reducing the use and improving the efficiency of memory bandwidth. With memory, we increased the efficiency of our memory controllers by changing their architecture. We added a second memory controller with deeper, narrower, and more efficient scheduling queues to take advantage of moving our memory layout from a 4x32 to an 8x16. We also added in a dedicated pipe from the display engine to memory that bypasses all the SOC fabric arbitration layers to ensure users can enjoy a fluid visual experience across multiple rich, high-resolution displays. Now, Tiger Lake was built to support not only LP4X 4267 and DDR4 3200, which are launching today, but it was also future-proofed to support LP5 5400, which will emerge in platforms later next year. The Tiger Lake memory architecture is built to scale and support concurrent workloads across the spectrum. While the improvements in performance and bandwidth are impressive enough, we were determined to create a platform capability second to none. None of us could have foreseen the pandemic, but certainly today, we need greater capabilities for our more collaborative and demanding environments. Again, Tiger Lake delivers to our OEMs and customers an ability to create a connected mobile PC experience that is unprecedented. I wanted to ensure that Tiger Lake enabled users to collaborate and connect with a quality experience that was unique in its class. Today we work, stream, conference, and even game, sometimes all in the same day. We wanted the Tiger Lake experience to include the best of display, imaging, and low power AI capabilities. And again, we did that. With the display in this generation, we wanted to increase not only the number of displays that could be supported, but also handle the greater resolutions and quality emerging in future displays. Tiger Lake can support up to four 4K displays simultaneously, or even an 8K high resolution display with a pure fluid experience. The SOC seamlessly scales to handle the bandwidth and quality of service demands. This comes about with our 64 byte dedicated display pipe to memory. And with imaging, there are several new Tiger Lake camera capabilities that are brought to life in our new IPU6 technology. The image pipeline is now fully implemented in hardware for lower power and faster responsiveness. There are up to six sensors that are capable of supporting video up to 4K 90 resolutions with still image resolutions up to 42 megapixels. Today we'll launch supporting 4K 30 and 27 megapixels respectively. Our IPU6 architecture supports a host of new sensor technologies and quality enhancements. With the 2.0 version of Tiger Lake's Gaussian Neural Accelerator, we have added an AI offload engine that can deliver one gigaop per milliwatt up to 38 gigaops. This is perfect for CPU offloading of audio background noise cancellation or even speech dictation and translation. The experience Tiger Lake can deliver for today's conferencing, collaborating, gaming, streaming, and multitask oriented environments is perfect for the needs of today's mobile PC user. The Tiger Lake SoC offers a rich palette of IO capabilities not available in any other mobile PC. Tiger Lake enables OEMs to build great new platform capabilities in an array of new form factors. Tiger Lake introduces for the first time in any mobile PC platform fully integrated Thunderbolt 4 and USB 4 that are fully specification compliant. There are up to four fully integrated Type-C ports that support Thunderbolt 4 where the user can have the confidence of a fully verified all-in-one cable across USB, PCIe, and DisplayPort capabilities. The integrated display via the Type-C subsystem builds on the prior DP tunneling over Thunderbolt. Now our Tiger Lake platforms that are launching today will include four PCIe Gen 4 lanes that can be used directly to attach an SSD to the CPU for increased responsiveness and without having to go through the PCH. Not only is this great for high-speed storage devices for which we are seeing 100 nanoseconds less latency, but it also allows for other interesting configurations. Say, for example, being able to attach graphics cards to it. Later launches of the Tiger Lake family will include additional PCIe Gen 4 lanes and DPN support for discrete cards display output to be muxed over our Type-C ports. What defines the Tiger Lake experience as much as anything we've designed is our attempt to deliver added performance and platform capabilities without sacrificing the SOC efficiency. We wanted to not only hold the line, but also improve the SOC energy consumption to enable OEMs to deliver even greater battery life than before. In order to improve power and performance to achieve our aggressive goals, we worked on two separate streams of power management work. One, we targeted several areas of the design for reduced power consumption, even with all the added features and performance. 
Our improved high VT transistors are vital for improving power in our Type-C, PCIe imaging, and DDRIO subsystems. We lowered the fixed rail voltages over Ice Lake where possible, while also improving the efficiency of our fully integrated voltage regulators. We also reduced the amount of logic needed to live on our deep sleep C-state sustain rail, as well as improve our hardware-based save and restore logic. Two, Tiger Lake was designed to dynamically match the frequency and voltage to the bandwidth needed by the workloads being run. This is SOC design at its best. Our autonomous DVFS capabilities achieve low latency scaling of voltage and frequency to run at the most power efficient point based on workload bandwidth for both SOC fabric and memory. Let me show you how this works. I'll walk you through one example on how DVFS would work now that all clocks can run independently. At this point in time, the core workload is in a core-centric phase where most data can be consumed directly from the core caches. Therefore, the core runs as fast as possible, whereas the fabric and the memory lower their frequency since there's very little activity there. What happens when the core has to start accessing data from the LLC? In that case, the core reduces its frequency to match the required throughput. The fabric raises its frequency to match the LLC bandwidth required by the application. Later on, the application starts fetching data from memory. At that stage, memory takes the frequency up to deliver max bandwidth. The fabric reduces the frequency to just match the memory bandwidth, and core also reduces the frequency even further to just match the required throughput. Finally, the workload re-enters a phase where there are very few requests to the young core. As you can see, core frequency goes back up while fabric and memory frequencies go very low. In the end, both of these work streams resulted in greater power efficiency, which translates into higher performance at the same power envelope with decreased energy consumption. Tiger Lake can deliver a performance experience plugged and unplugged that is unmatched in part due to features like our autonomous DVFS. Tiger Lake is built on the foundation of Superfend technology that enabled both our architects and designers to innovate and create what we believe is simply the best mobile PC SOC. A design evolved for what our customers not only need but will demand in today's new world, delivering more than a generational increase in CPU performance with Willow Cove, greater than 20%. A massive leap forward in graphics power efficiency and performance with the new XE engine. Increased memory and fabric efficiency to support not only higher bandwidth, but greater efficiency across all bandwidth scenarios, delivering the richest I.O. capabilities in a mobile PC ever. All with an efficiency that allows for greater battery life and more advanced form factors than before. I'd like to wrap it up by showing why 11th Gen Intel Core processors will deliver an amazing productivity experience on the things people do most. As Chris mentioned at the beginning, Intel is taking a new approach to how we evaluate performance, looking at not just representative industry benchmarks like Sysmark 25, but also industry-leading applications like those used in Microsoft Office Suite, and a new workflow view that shows what happens when a user does more than one thing back-to-back. -back. You'll see in this case the performance on benchmarks and applications is fairly similar. In conclusion, 11th Gen Intel Core processors deliver real productivity performance improvements on the most popular applications that people use every day and have the right connectivity solutions integrated into the SOC to help get things done faster. On behalf of our process technologists, architects, and design engineers at Intel, we thank you. With that, I'd like to turn it over to Tom Peterson. Thanks, Boyd. I'm Tom Peterson, and today I'm going to show you Tiger Lake's new GPU called Intel Iris Xe Graphics. This new GPU is a massive upgrade and delivers up to 2x the performance of our prior Ice Lake generation, 1.5x performance versus AMD's 4800U, and delivers a comparable experience to NVIDIA's MX350 across a broad collection of top gaming titles. What's most amazing is that this 2x perf bump is delivered in the same power envelope and approximately the same area as our prior generation. We also deliver best-in-class media acceleration, that outperforms competition by 2x. Our performance optimizations are not just on a few selected titles, of course, but across a ton of titles, from the most popular first-person shooters like PUBG or Battlefield 5 to RTSs like Gears Tactics. 
In this video, I'm showing you four examples of our performance scaling gen to gen. Gears Tactics, one of the most acclaimed billion dollar franchises in gaming. We are seeing around 2x FPS performance gen on gen with Gears Tactics. Released on August 13th, A Total War Saga Troy is the first entry in the award-winning series to focus on the legendary Trojan War. This game shows around 1.5x improvement gen on gen. With around 1.6x gen-on-gen -gen performance, Battlefield 5 is an award-winning first-person shooter developed by EA DICE and published by Electronic Arts. Now in its eighth season, PUBG still maintains a top position on games played on Steam and the number of viewers on Twitch. We're seeing up to 1.7x gen-on-gen. As I mentioned, we built Iris XE graphics for performance and efficiency, and you can see we deliver across a broad range of games versus Ice Lake. Gears Tactics is up to 2x faster, delivering playable frame rates at 1080p medium, and CSGO runs at up to 110 FPS, up over 90% versus Ice Lake. Part of what makes this possible is our new Superfin technology, but a lot of the games come from innovative enhancements delivered by our hardware and software engineers. We recently completed Architecture Day, where we talked about XELP design. And if you want more details, take a look at David Bly's presentation that's available on the Intel Newsroom website. Some of the major advancements we've made to Intel Iris XE graphics are shown in this block diagram. Right off the bat, we've increased the computational throughput of the core by increasing the number of execution units by 50%, from 64 to 96. Through SuperFin technology and repipelining, we've also increased their frequency from 1.1 gigahertz to 1.35 gigahertz. And at the same time, we've reorganized the EU to maximize utilization of floating point resources using eight wide vectors. Another significant efficiency improvement comes from moving some of the scheduling complexity to software and sharing the thread dispatch logic between pairs of EUs. We've also added support for a new instruction, DP4A where we pack four 8-bit data elements into our 32-bit engine, enabling four multiply-accumulate operations in each clock. This yields 64 8-bit ops per clock per EU, which at full saturation is 8.3 tera ops per second. That's huge performance, and it enables artificial intelligence applications like upscaling of live video, background removal, and many others. We've also overhauled our memory subsystem, implementing end-to-end -end compression, which allows virtually all engines of the GPU to keep data compressed, optimizing scenarios like game streaming, video chat, recording, and others. All this new tech delivers a great performance device with 96 EUs delivering over two teraflops of FP32 performance, backed by 3.8 megabytes of L3 cache, fed by 2x the interconnect bandwidth versus Ice Lake. Lastly, the XE Graphics Core also keeps support for VRS, where game designers can specify per draw call the preferred sample density. But for this tech, it really helps to look at a game image. Intel's been working with Codemasters for many years, and they've implemented VRS into their title Grid 2019. Here you can see that there are some different levels of detail on each object. For example, the interior roll cage is all one color without much variation but the control panel in the driver's wheel is text with lots of color and lots of detail. VRS allows games to optimize computation, effectively steering the GPU horsepower towards areas of the scene that need the most work. In this case, areas that are shown in green get a lot of computation, and the areas in red get less. In GRID, this dynamic assignment of sample density improves overall performance by up to 30%, with little compromise in perceived quality. The developer decides the right trade-off between performance and quality to deliver the best experience. Our hardware is only as good as the software that runs on it. And for GPUs, that's all about the XE software stack. We've updated all of our driver components for Tiger Lake, including DX12 and Vulkan, and we've redesigned our DX11 driver to optimize performance and performance per watt. It's now more threaded, and it has lower CPU overhead compared to prior versions. And we've also enhanced our GPU compiler to do software scoreboarding, which enables a significant reduction in hardware complexity and in delivers improvements in perf per watt. We've also introduced a new technology called GPU Profile Guided Optimization, or GPGO. 
This technology opportunistically recompiles shaders, trying new algorithms based on real-time performance statistics gathered while games are running. It's kind of like a JIT for graphics, looking at all kinds of information, optimizing it in real time. Taken all together, the new driver work and features deliver a great experience for Tiger Lake based notebooks. The combination of hardware and software improvements deliver a platform that hits playable frame rates on most major titles at 1080p. Far Cry New Dawn, Borderlands 3, Hitman 2, and The Division are just a few examples of titles that are playable for the first time on Intel integrated graphics. But of course we need to be aware of our competition. AMD 4800U Renoir is AMD's current fastest integrated graphics in the U series, and Tiger Lake beats it by a wide margin, which you can see in the side-by-side -side video how Tiger Lake stacks up versus Renoir. Gears Tactics is the first action-packed turn-based strategy game in the Gears of War series. Tiger Lake is 1.76x faster than Comp. Over 7.5 million people downloaded a Total War Saga Troy in 24 hours on the Epic Store during their promotional giveaway. Now they can experience 1.52x better performance on Tiger Lake versus Comp. With 1.49x performance advantage versus Comp, CSGO achieved 1.3 million concurrent players in April and an all-time high since its release of 2012. Developed and published by Codemasters, Grid won Best Racing Game at Gamescom in 2019, and it's the 10th installment in the award-winning series. Here we're seeing 1.82x performance of Tiger Lake compared to Comp. Our advantage over competition continues over most top titles. You can see in some examples by close to 2x, and on games we have tested, our average win is around 50%. As a matter of fact, in this chart, we show our performance is so strong that we deliver a similar experience to NVIDIA's discrete GPU, the MX350. Now I've covered the advancements in hardware and software, but we've also made significant progress around our brand requirements. All systems with Intel Iris Xe graphics require dual channel memory. This gives our GPU the needed memory bandwidth to deliver the full user experience of the Xe brand. Low-end discrete GPUs will have a challenge in front of them to add value in these Tiger Lake based notebooks. Intel GPUs drive more displays than any other in the industry, and so of course we have continued to improve the display capabilities of Tiger Lake. We now support up to four simultaneous 4K HDR displays. Our Iris Xe display engine is also capable of delivering rich HDR10, and we're the first in the industry to accelerate Dolby Vision and hardware. We also support refresh rates up to 360 hertz and adaptive sync. Our media performance is unparalleled, with Tiger Lake delivering 2x the encode performance over competition during Adobe 10-bit export, and with the first AV1 hardware decode for notebooks, we're ready to support the next generation of streaming content without skips or drop frames caused by software decode. More on AV1 later. Of course, Intel Iris Xe graphics can apply all these technologies simultaneously. One example is game streaming, where gamers play on their local machine and broadcast in real time to their favorite streaming service. A few years ago, this technology was only available on desktops with high-end discrete graphics. Later, it became available on Intel's H-series processors. Now, the 3D sections of Tiger Lake sync beautifully with the media acceleration hardware, delivering great experiences on thin and light notebooks. In this video, the left side is Comp, and on the right is Tiger Lake. Intel's Tiger Lake is delivering great frame rates, playing CSGO at well over 60 frames per second, and simultaneously encoding and streaming, delivering a seamless, high-quality experience. On the left-hand side is Comp, and it's struggling to keep up. With Tiger Lake, we've delivered the best processor for gaming performance on thin and light notebooks. Our benchmark performance is a leading indicator of performance, but the real payoff is delivering more playable games for our users. And with Tiger Lake, we go way beyond that. We deliver great gaming and terrific streaming. And we also integrate Thunderbolt 4, Wi-Fi 6, so users can have a single connection to large screens. They will never get cut off from their next battle royale. We have higher performance in benchmarks and higher performance in real life versus comp, and our platform delivers all the right hardware capabilities for the best thin and light gaming experience. In addition, 11th gen Intel Core processors with Iris Xe graphics 
will not only be the best for gaming in thin and light designs, but they'll also deliver the best entertainment experience from anywhere. Entertainment is another example of why rugs are important. There's no benchmark. So we created a usage guide to help us highlight the benefit of being the first in the industry to support Dolby Vision with hardware acceleration, allowing for longer battery life. We evaluated this experience on Tiger Lake versus Ice Lake and found that our Iris XE media engine improves system level power 20%. That translates to more than one hour of additional viewing time on a 40 watt hour battery. We're also leading the industry in OEM enabling to bring more of a movie theater experience to our laptops. Dolby Vision coupled with Dolby Atmos on an 11th gen thin and light PC will deliver incredibly rich visuals and an immersive entertainment experience. Next, while Intel Wi-Fi 6 Gig Plus is a blazingly fast wireless solution, we all know some places don't have great bandwidth. As the first notebook to implement AV1 hardware decode support into processors, Tiger Lake helps maintain the highest video quality in lower bandwidth environments. It also enables longer battery life while you enjoy your favorite content on industry-leading applications like YouTube and iQIYI. Finally, as you heard earlier, we have a unique engagement with Amazon to deliver the Alexa for PC experience. With 100% Tiger Lake designs supporting modern standby, people who purchase A4 PC enabled 11th gen systems will be able to wake and interact with their PCs hand-free and use Alexa to turn on and crank up their favorite tunes. By integrating the right IP into hardware and enabling ISVs, OEMs, and industry partners, Intel's Tiger Lake processors deliver an unmatched entertainment experience on thin and light. 11th gen Intel Core processors with Iris XE graphics not only deliver an astonishing game experience in thin and light, but they will also deliver a deeply immersive entertainment experience from anywhere. And with that, I'll hand it off to Ryan Stroud. Thanks, Tom. Long time no see. Hey, everyone. I think I know many of you in the audience today, but for those of you that I haven't had the chance to meet yet, I'm Ryan Shrout. I'm the chief performance strategist here at Intel and recently took a role leading the technical marketing initiatives for client products. Now, I spent 18 years in your seat listening to presentations from technical leaders and executives, so I understand the questions that must be racing through your mind and hopefully the interest and excitement about Tiger Lake, now 11th gen Intel Core processors. I'm here to round up the presentations with what I believe will be two topics of interest. First, I'm gonna talk through the idea of performance scaling and how the 11th gen core mobile processors offer never before seen flexibility there, along with a question of, hey, what about TDP? My second topic will look at the overall performance story of Tiger Lake. While you have seen data presented throughout the Blueprint event today and during GB's keynote, I wanna show you a more holistic picture across a range of tests and workloads including both generational improvements and competitive comparisons. Let's get started. One of the things we are most proud of on Tiger Lake is that it is the most scalable U-series processor we've ever built. What do we mean by that? And why is it important for product leadership perspective? Many of you might notice that we don't have your typical TDP spec on our 11th gen product speeds and feeds that you see here. I assure you this isn't an accident and it isn't an indicator of a very deliberate movement we are on with Tiger Lake and how we talk about performance and compare systems, not just using our silicon, but other competitive products. What most of you think of as TDP is not useful data, as it is one, not an input for system design, and two, misused by marketing, OEMs, and reviewers for unrealistic positioning of the SOC and systems built with it. So what is TDP really? While different companies have different definitions and implementations, which is part of the problem of the spec, TDP in our mind represents the maximum power for all components in a package or system, not just the CPU cores on a worst case workload. But the truth is that scalable architectures and silicon aren't and shouldn't be defined by any single power or thermal number. This isn't new to Tiger Lake. Our previous gen, 10th gen Ice Lake products were able to showcase similar behavior. Let's take a look at an example of this with our previous generation product. Here you see two sets of data with the same 15 watt TDP rated Core i7 1065 G7 processor. The TDP is the same on the spec sheet for these different systems, but because of the cooling implementation, the tuning from the OEMs in partnership with Intel and the target audience, 
and use cases for these systems, the performance can actually be quite different across different workloads. And the actual measured power draw is different both early in the testing and in sustained usage. This data showed that we saw as much as a 40% increase in performance on a CPU-centric workload and 33% faster graphics performance by moving from the 15-watt configured thermal limit to 25-watt limit. Now, no single implementation is best in our view, but each design allows for different focuses and different product design choices. This is all made possible by the increasing and impressive dynamic range that we give our mobile product family. This visualization here shows that prior to Intel Turbo Boost technologies being implemented, TDP was used by OEMs to drive their system thermal design. But with the scalability of the processors and that increasingly capable Turbo Boost, you really need to look at other SOC power controls like PL1, PL2, and Tau. Also worth noting is that there is no industry standard way to define and measure TDP, so you really can't compare it across vendors. Here is a high-level representation of the complexity of determining the frequency of a modern Intel processor. I don't have enough time to dive into all the intricacy of the diagram, but what I think the key is, is to understand that there are many inputs into performance and frequency, like the workloads themselves, the OS power profiles, thermal sensors, and the customizable Adaptix Dynamic Tuning Framework, labeled DTT here. This allows OEMs to optimize performance for their specific chassis design decisions. This all occurs in a power management system with various controllers, all to get us from the requested frequency to the resulting frequency of the hardware on the other end. Those DTT inputs on the bottom left include various power levels, or PL settings, that I think many of you are already familiar with. The PL1 setting represents most closely what you think of as TDP, and generally is built as the sustained cooling capability of a notebook for long-use workloads. PL2 represents a maximum spiked power level used for burst scenarios for maximum frequency and responsiveness in user experience. But these values can and do change in response to current thermal capacity of the design and Adaptix dynamic tuning. The truth is that defining a complex processor that is implemented on a per system basis by a single number like TDP is a disservice to the reviewer, to the OEM, and most importantly to the consumer that is looking to find the best solution for their needs. But what does it actually mean for 11th Gen Tiger Lake? It means that we offer performance that scales from 7 watts up to 28 watts with the same SOC. The package differs between what we call our UP3 and UP4 designs, mainly for size restrictions for the slimmest implementations, but the fundamental Tiger Lake silicon remains the same. You will find Tiger Lake in premium, ultra-thin fanless systems, thin and light leadership products, and ultra-mobile gaming high-performance models. All of this is determined by the OEM and what they want to build for their customer and what features they want to enable and target for each design. As we look forward to the 11th Gen Notebooks with different PL1 design points, you can expect to see performance that ranges based on those OEM design choices. In just a couple of examples, you see here, the CPU test of 3 d Mark Time Spy sees a 37% improvement by going from a 15-watt PL1 to a 28-watt setting, while a graphics-based test like Grid 2019 here scales by 33%. A critical part of how you should measure performance and experiences on notebooks is when running in DC mode on battery. Performance when plugged in is important, sure, but how does the system respond differently when away from the plug, on the couch, sitting on a plane, or in your backyard? It's one of the reasons why Project Athena and our Evo platform are so important, committing to a balance of performance and battery life for the consumer. It's easier said than done, though, and that's what makes the engineering and social science that Intel provides so powerful. Look at the graph on the left of this system from an 11th gen device. The orange line represents SOC power when plugged in, while the blue line is the SOC power when running on battery. There is a slight difference there, but we're still bursting to high clock speeds to get the work done and provide the most responsive system to the user while balancing for battery life. Our competitor is doing something very different. When plugged in, the AMD system is spiking and applying power to get some baseline of performance. But when you unplug the system and run on battery, the power draw is significantly reduced, which means frequencies are reduced, and that will then affect performance and system responsiveness. So as you start getting these 11th gen systems in your hands, and as you compare to the competitive options in the market, 
this is one specific area that should get some focus in my view. This is what makes Intel unique and what enables the breadth and variance of systems that you'll see with Tiger Lake. This is also why defining a product by a single power or TDP number isn't the right thing to do when looking to make accurate comparisons. It also shows the investment that Intel makes in our co-engineering efforts with partners across the ecosystem to enable dozens of flagship leadership systems versus having maybe just one that's built for reviews. So, how does this affect performance and benchmarks more widely? Benchmarks, yes, they are important to us, but the discussion of benchmarks isn't without nuance. Anyone that has heard me talk over the last year at Intel will know that I am passionate about performance, testing, and the correct application of workloads to the proper segment and audience. I believe that the best benchmark is one that is representative of the workloads that a consumer will actually run on a device. This means finding and using benchmarks that are realistic and leaning less into the synthetics and theoreticals of performance. You have seen some of these claims here throughout the day, and they showcase our belief in tests that matter to consumers. But I know the crowd here wants to see more data and expects more from someone who is in your shoes. This slide shows you a cross-section of real-world and representative benchmarks that we believe represent the functions and workloads that consumers do on their systems. Across a range of tools like SysMark 25, PCMark 10 applications using Office 365, and WebExpert, you can see that Tiger Lake offers anywhere from 12 to 26% better performance over our previous generation Ice Lake product. AMD's latest Ryzen mobile processors, which we are measuring on the highest performance retail system we've found, running at its highest performance profile, are well behind the results you get from Tiger Lake. The 11th gen processor is 28% faster in SysMark 25 and 30% faster in PCMark 10 applications running Office 365. Like our 10th gen Ice Lake product before it, 11th gen Tiger Lake represents the best in performance for the future of compute workloads, including AI-based applications. This test shows performance in MLPerf, an industry standard AI benchmark. In CPU core only performance results, our 11th gen Core i7 1185G7 offers up to 78% better performance, despite having half the physical core count, thanks to our DL Boost VNNI instructions. However, when you utilize the new XE graphics with DP4A acceleration, that AI inference performance lead jumps to more than 4X over the Ryzen 4800U. But you'll notice that this set of AI benchmark results is different than the previous. It isn't using representative applications. So while these results are definitely impressive, it is an indicator that the benchmark industry is further behind in the construction of tools needed to showcase representative AI-enabled applications. And this is where the work of creating what we call RUGS, or Representative Usage Guides, came into play. You saw some of this previously in Roger and Nate's section. Our role of creating and enabling benchmark capability with applications and forward-looking capabilities allows us to show real-world performance today with AI PC features today. Using consumer content creation tools like Photoshop Elements, we see Tiger Lake offering up to 19% better performance with functions like Smooth Skin. Innovative new applications like Nero PhotoTagger that automatically recognize images with AI run nearly 2x faster than our competition. And thanks to our ISV and software enabling teams that combine the power of the hardware with software, programs like Gigapixel AI with its photo enlargement tool and PowerDirector with its style transfer feature demonstrate performance leadership of 4x or up to 11x compared to the top end mobile processors from AMD. These are real world applications with real world performance results. All right, since my time here with you is limited, there's one more topic of performance I needed to really drive home. When I started the real world performance initiatives last year, the goal was to showcase performance that matters to the consumer, that we are advocating for the consumer with not just how we talk about performance, but in how we design and engineer the products. This evolving performance narrative that you have heard mentioned throughout the day or intelligent performance, or whatever you decide to call it for yourself, is essentially an extension of what this initiative began, but with significant effort to expand beyond a single application towards these workflows, these collections of software and functions that represent what consumers actually do with their devices. Now, I would wager that it is exceedingly rare that a consumer opens one application, performs one function, shuts down that app, and then closes their PC. 
Workflows account for this, and we are taking the initiative to operationalize this for our internal testing, as well as enabling our press and analyst partners too. Chris, Roger, Boyd, and Tom already spoke to many of the workflows that we have developed at Intel to measure the performance of Tiger Lake across a range of realistic software and usage scenarios. I want to show you one more that we call lifestyle streaming. This demo shows a content creator who is streaming a how-to video for creating a panoramic HDR image from multiple exposures. The creator is using Lightroom to merge the images and Photoshop for content to wear fill. The stream is captured in OBS with XSplit vCam to remove the background of the streamer's webcam. You will notice that the Intel system on the right gets done much faster than the AMD system on the left. The competitive system is struggling to keep up because the compute workload, along with the streaming, causes the system to be bottlenecked. On the Intel system, the images have been merged and we've moved on to the content aware fill in Photoshop to automatically fill out the blank areas in the edges. The AMD system is just finishing up the preview and has moved on to the merge. Also note the screen at the bottom left, which shows the competitive stream, which has only been able to stream a few frames, making it impossible for the viewer to watch. These are impressive results that can have immediate impact on consumers buying systems with 11th gen core processors. The data tells the story for me. While capturing and streaming, the Tiger Lake system utilizes the QSV capability of the XE graphics for encoding and DL Boost VNNI on the CPU cores for background removal work. The Adobe Lightroom preview step shows a 79% performance advantage over the Ryzen 4800U, while the panoramic merge is nearly 10% faster than comp. The final Photoshop content aware fill is 42% faster on the 11th gen system, and the full workflow, while the user is streaming, is 62% faster than the Ryzen 4800U system. This all occurs, as others have pointed out, thanks to the hardware engines inside Tiger Lake and the deep software enabling work we do with the ecosystem. Though sprinkled throughout today's presentations, I wanted to show a summary of the real world performance of these representative workflows on one page. I think the performance story we have laid out for Tiger Lake is indisputable across productivity, content creation, gaming, live streaming, collaboration. We have demonstrated a range of applications in each of those workflows that the power of the 11th gen core Tiger Lake CPU provides significant gen on gen and competitive leadership. Not in a single test or a few, not in a niche professional workstation segment tool brought into the consumer thin and light discussion, but with real software, real workloads, and real world performance. Couple that with the performance leadership demonstrated in our collection of representative industry supported benchmarks, and you have a performance story that is really unmatched in this space. Now to close us out, I wanna bring back Chris Walker. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Ryan. We're so proud of what we were able to accomplish with Tiger Lake. Our architecture innovation and pace is at as fast as ever. The 11th gen Intel Core processor has so many new and first innovations that we illustrated throughout the day. People want more out of their PCs. They want a PC platform to help them focus, create, connect, and collaborate, and achieve their best. The 11th gen Intel Core with Intel Iris XE graphics delivers no compromises anytime, anywhere on Windows and on Chrome. It's where we're proud to say that the 11th gen Intel Core is the world's best processor for laptops. Now we'll see that in 150 designs in all with many more SKUs. More than 50 of those designs based on the 11th gen Core with Intel Iris XE graphics are going to be in market this year including more than 20 Intel Evo verified designs with more to come next year as well. You'll hear more from us in the coming months as we introduce more SKUs, including Intel Pentium and Celeron branded SKUs, Intel's first discrete graphics product for mobile, DG1, and the introduction of the 11th gen Intel Core vPro platform and Intel Evo platforms with vPro capabilities as well, rounding out a full portfolio like only Intel can. I want to thank you for your time with us today. We can't wait for you to experience firsthand these great systems. Thank you.